All right, uh, today I'm going to be making a uh, pair of coyote mitts. I'm going to start off with a old uh, shearling sheepskin uh, coat that I have. So I'm just going to uh, turn it into a pair of uh, mitts. So how I'm going to be doing this is uh, I have my template that I made. This is going to be the back portion, okay? And this is going to be the inside of the glove, all right? And this is going to be the palm portion. So I'm just going to uh, start cutting out my patterns and all this different shearling that I have. So I haven't worn the coat for quite a long time and it's a little bit old and worn, but you can see that it's still in pretty good shape. Uh, the liner is in excellent condition, should keep my hands warm. We'll go from there. So I'm only going to be putting coyote hide on the exterior as I only have one triple X large coyote. So I would have liked to put fur on this portion, but I just don't have enough. I, I have more coyotes in the freezer, but I haven't tanned them, but I want to get this project done for hunting season. Uh, biggest factor with hunting season that uh, I find personally is my hands get cold. I just want to solve that problem right away. All right, I'll take you to the process. All right, first thing we're going to be doing is uh, tracing around our right side mitt. This will be the inside portion of the mitt. Okay, and uh, so you can see I traced around this template that I made up uh, with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all around the corners. With uh, cutting the shearling, you don't want to go too deep. Just enough. You don't want to be able to be cutting the fur. Just the hide. Make your cuts as straight as possible. Make sure that your blade is sharp. So you only really get one chance to do this unless you have uh, a whole bunch of extra pieces. But as it stands from the coat that I utilized, there isn't much that goes with size. For this, this is one piece, so I'm not going to be splicing pieces together. So there isn't much opportunity for error here. Uh, for this piece over here, I'm going to have to uh, cut two different pieces, sew them together, because this is going to be having the coyote hide on top of this piece. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if this material is sewed over here, all the way along here. Okay, so this piece right here, I don't have any other pieces that are this big that I can utilize, so can't really screw up. And then we'll have to start all over again, but such is life. Also with this shearling, that you'll find that it's best to kind of stretch the material between the cuts. So I just take my index finger and my thumb and just stretch it out as best I can. And you'll see over here, there's a little piece right here at the end. So what I did is I started from the middle, worked my way out, and then I'm going to be doing the same thing over here because it's kind of difficult to slice over there, so, and it's not as accurate. So I'm just going to, maybe we'll get all the way through, just kind of just drag your knife as close as you can. Because if you put your knife too far, you're going to be cutting into the fur. And you don't want that, because then your seam won't be nicely hid as you want. And also, make sure your knife is straight up and down. If you have sideways cuts, as I did right here, it just kind of makes it messy. Like I was saying about the corners at the end, see I'm not going to be starting my cut going over here. This is going to start bunching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here and keep on stretching and work my way down this way. All right, first piece is done. This is what the uh, the palm portion of the right glove looks like and it's just ready to be cut out now. All right, the inside palm portion of the mitt is uh, finished. So 
what's going to happen is, because this is going to be the good side, this is going to be the outside, and the shearling itself is going to be the inside. So what we're going to be doing is joining up the good sides. So the good sides are going to be facing each other. All right. And then we're just going to line it up and so right around the edges. Hopefully you can get this all along here. There we go. All around here. And then what's going to happen is we're just going to flip this inside out afterwards. And everything lines up. All right, now I'm in the process of sewing up the rest of the material here. So I connected the seams, lined everything up, and I clamped it just to kind of keep it uh, straight. And I have a needle over here at the other end just to keep everything straight as well here. So what I'm using to sew this up with is a speedy stitcher. It's pretty good. It has a wax thread which is uh, quite durable. It's quite thick and uh, fairly water resistant so it should hold up. And uh, I'll just do a couple stitches here just to show you guys what this is all about. So I'm trying to space them quite evenly here and then I grab material with both index fingers and thumbs okay and I push it through because if I didn't do it this way it's not gonna pierce the hide right at the tip right over here then what happens is it grabs onto this piece right over here then this piece will shift and then what's going to happen is it's going to re result in bunching. So I find this probably works the best. I'm sure there's other people out there that they have a trick for it, but this is the best one that I've found. All right, so it went through both pieces of material. And now I'm just going to grab the tag end, insert it through the speedy stitcher loop here, and pull. Tighten it up. And then what happens sometimes is when you tighten it up, because this is just one piece of string, right? So you tighten it up, then it'll bunch the rest of this because it's just taking string from the end here when I tighten this up. So you gotta just kind of keep it in the back of your mind that, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna have to just straighten that seam out every once in a while because you'll find that all of a sudden you're going to fold this inside out again, or right side out again, and there's going to be bunching in the corners. So that's something that we have to watch out for. One advantage to the Speedy Stitcher is, besides being a very slow, slow process, um, one thing you can do, opposed to say a sewing machine, is you can adjust your seam pretty easily. So, for instance, say, let's move this over a little bit here. Say if both these seams, I hope you can see this. I don't know if it's coming out here. Okay, this end is a little longer than this end. Well, you can just simply just kind of just shuffle it over. So you won't have any unwanted bunching. So that is definitely a plus. So I got the mitt sewed up for the palm and the thumb portion. And so I sewed up all along here and to the end then I just did a double square knot just to make everything hold together. Now I'm just going to be pulling this right side out. Just going to start by pushing the thumb through. See how it turned out. pretty good. It was hard to tell whether or not I was keeping my 5 8 inch seam allowance accurately. It was hard to see through the fur. But uh, it's not too bad. it'll work. 
stretch it out a bit. And try it on. Yeah, there's quite a bit of room in the thumb because I'm planning to have like another glove inside. But yeah, alright, let's carry on.